नमस्ते बेटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बेटिया अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू ऑल माय सेल्फ जेवीएन डॉक्टर रवि जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन इन फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस एट ज्योति विद्यापीठ वुमेन्स यूनिवर्सिटी जयपुर इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट दी नॉन एल्कोहल फैटी लिवर डिजीज इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट दी एल्कोहलिक लिवर डिजीज we have uh, tried to understood uh, understand the etiopathogenesis the clinical features the various investigations and the management of the patients who are coming to us with the alcoholic liver disease those who are having uh, who are addicted to alcohol and those who are developing cirrhosis hepatitis and the other complicated encephalitis because of the excessive consumption of alcohol leading to the alcoholic liver disease in today's lecture we are going to start with non alcoholic fatty liver disease so if a fatty liver is uh, developing because in a uh, lot of sonographies we are going to see the uh, fatty liver <clears throat> the finding of fatty liver but when you will enquire you will find that the patient is not taking any sort of alcohol so there will be a doubt in your mind that why uh, fatty liver is seen in the patient who are not even taking alcohol so this we are going to uh, discuss in today's lecture and uh, that is non alcoholic fatty liver disease those people who are not taking any sort of alcohol but still developing the fatty liver what are the different causes of that particular disease condition uh, what are the clinical features of those disease condition how to investigate uh, the non alcoholic fatty liver disease and how to manage such condition so non alcohol uh, fatty liver disease is basically a small topic but it is important because you are uh, going to get a lot of patient related to the non alcoholic fatty liver disease this uh, non alcoholic fatty liver disease is basically a disease of the affluent societies those people who are uh, who are uh, very sound financially and th those who are living a high living means uh, they are taking a lot of such food material that is not good for health so it is seen in the affluent societies with increasing prevalence in the proportion to rise the obesity so those people who are obese who are taking a lot of junk food who are not uh, following a proper diet those who are not taking proper exercise in those uh, individual we are going to see fatty liver disease there is no relation of alcohol in this particular disease condition so therefore it is known as non alcoholic fatty liver disease most common cause of the non alcoholic fatty liver disease is chronic liver diseases after hepatitis b hepatitis c and alcohol although this particular patient is not taking alcohol but alcohol can still lead to the development of the non alcohol fatty liver disease other causes includes hepatitis b and hepatitis c infection hepatitis we have already discussed in the previous lecture for more reference you can consult those video e videos and also the e notes that i have uploaded on the portal jbw.in now it can be classified the non alcoholic fatty liver disease can be classified into the following three types number 1 uh, the patient can have fatty liver Uh, number two is the non-alcoholic steatohepatitis that is known as NASH, NASH, and the third one is the cirrhosis. So we have fatty liver, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, and the cirrhosis. It is also considered as a metabolic syndrome of hyper uh, hyper triglyceridemia, hypertension, and diabetes mellitus with the elevation of body mass index greater than twenty five kg per meter square. so <clears throat> what is non alcoholic um, hepatic disease uh, fatty liver disease it is basically classified into three parts we have fatty fatty liver we have uh, non alcoholic steatohepatitis that is nash and we also have cirrhosis of the liver it is characterized by the uh, metabolic syndrome so non alcoholic fatty liver disease in such patient we are going to see hypertriglyceridemia so the patient will complain of hypertriglyceridemia that is increased uh, quantity or the amount of the triglycerides in the blood there will be hypertension and diabetes mellitus so the patient will complain of increased blood pressure there will be uh, diabetes mellitus and an uh, increased body mass index of 25 greater than 25 kg per meter square so because we have seen that this disease is seen in the affluent or the uh, people who are obese now what is the pathophysiology what is the pathophysiology how, how the uh, things are changing in case of uh, fatty non alcoholic fatty liver disease i have explained try to explain this thing in a pictorial form uh, that i have given you in the e notes so we have a, a normal liver the first hit of the normal liver is done by the diet if a person is uh, taking a diet that has increased in the high fat content that is having increased fatty uh, acid influx 
with decreased fatty acid oxidation. So a patient is taking a lot of fatty acids, but the oxidation is not taking place properly and increased fatty acid synthesis is uh, taking place. And there will be decrease in the VLDL assembly and insulin resistance. This will lead to the development of the fatty liver. So what is happening, in, there are two hits basically, first hit, second hit, and then it will lead to the development of the fibrosis. So I have uh, told you about three things. One, we will be getting fatty liver, then uh, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, and the third one is the fibrosis. So this uh, fibrosis or the cirrhosis, all right, in the cirrhosis, there are two things. One, we are getting fibrosis and the second is the nodule formation. So here we will be talking about the fibrosis only and uh, no nodule formation. So in the first hit of the normal uh, liver, there will be increased fatty acid influx, decreased fatty acid oxidation, there will be increased fatty acid synthesis and decreased VLDL assembly. That leads to the insulin resistance and ultimately leading to the fatty liver. In the fatty liver, if the conditions continue, then the second hit will be because of the TNF alpha and uh, this will lead to the oxidate, uh, oxidant stress. Oxidant stress with, uh, which will cause en uh, endotoxins and immune factors that will be responsible and ultimately it will be leading to the non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. On this non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, there are other feature factors like leptin that will act and it will ultimately lead to the fibrosis of the liver. So uh, there is a lot of pathophysiology that is explained in your book. So I would suggest you to consider or to go through your book for the complete uh, pathophysiology because everything cannot be uh, explained here. This is a quite tricky topic, a, a little bit difficult topic, but you only get a short note on this non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Therefore, I'm uh, discussing only this much about it in today's lecture. So this is about the pathophysiology in which we get normal liver, normal liver to fatty liver, fatty liver to non-alcoholic state of hepatitis, and then fibrosis, that is cirrhosis of the liver. Now, what are the various clinical features with which a patient can come to you? Whenever a patient of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is coming to us, what are the clinical features with which the patient can present to us? The most uh, patients are asymptomatic. So as I've told you, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is basically identified accidentally. A patient is going for ultrasonography or ultrasound for any other reason and you suddenly come to know that the patient is having fatty liver disease. And they, uh, so uh, most of the patients are asymptomatic. There will be abnormal liver function test. So the patient will have abnormal liver function test and with those of elevation in the transaminases or isolated uh, elevation of the GGT. So no symptoms of the alcoholic liver disease, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease will be asymptomatic. There will be abnormal liver function test and there will be particular elevation of the transaminases or isolated elevation of the GGT. The, uh, there will be occasionally present with the, the patient will be present, presenting with the pharacial bleeding or hepatocellular carcinoma. So there will be abnormal liver function test. There will be elevation of the transaminases or isolated level of the GGT. There will be uh, occasionally presence of pharacial bleeding or hepatocellular carcinoma. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is diagnosed with mild to moderately elevated serum transaminases. So <clears throat> in the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, there will be elevation, uh, elevation of mild to moderate elevation of the serum transaminases with no history of alcohol abuse. So this is the most important thing in case of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease that the patient is not having any history of uh, alcohol intake. <clears throat> and negative uh, chronic liver disease in the screen. So there is no uh, <clears throat> chronic liver disease that you are going to see. Now uh, about the various investigations, what are the various investigations that could be done for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? <clears throat> the liver function test can be done. It will show ALT that is slightly uh, normally higher than the AST. So in the liver function test, you are going to get AST slightly higher than the AST. So ALT is more than the AST and there will be a increased level of the ALT. I believe that you uh, by now you must know the full form of all these terms, AST, ALT, ALP, because I have repeated these terms many times in the previous lecture. If you have forgotten about it, then just refer your books or refer my previous e-notes. <clears throat> ultrasound can be done. This is the most uh, common investigation, ultrasonography or ultrasound that is done for uh, diagnosis of the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and liver biopsy. Liver biopsy is done in uh, such cases in order to determine the presence of inflammation or fibrosis. So if you are going to check for the fibrosis or cirrhosis of the liver, then you have to go for the 
uh, liver biopsy. Uh, NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, is characterized by fat mallory bodies with neutrophil infiltration and pericellular fibrosis. So the non-alcoholic steatohepatitis that we are getting is characterized by the fat. So there is fat, there is mallory bodies, neutrophil infiltration and pericellular fibrosis. So we have four things in NASH. We have fat, we have mallory bodies, we have neutrophil infiltration and periarticular fibrosis. Now, how to manage a case of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? So as we have discussed, this is seen in the affluent classes. It is caused due to the increased intake of the high fat diet. So we have to reduce the BMI and the insulin resistance. So there was high BMI, there was high insulin resistance. So we have to uh, reduce the BMI. We have to control the diet the patient is taking. We have to give the patient a proper diet plan and we have to uh, treat the insulin resistance. You also have to advise uh, the patient for a regular exercise. For treatment of the uh, insulin resistant diabetes, we can give metformin. <clears throat> Other medications that are uh, related with the insulin resistance or uh, controlling of the blood glucose level is the uh, thiazolidones uh, such as pigolitazone that improves the uh, liver function test. So there are certain drugs because we are getting a slight alteration in the liver function test in this particular disease condition. So AST, ALT, uh, and ALP levels are raised. And in order to treat those things, we are giving thiazolinidones uh, such as uh, pioglitazone, etc. And in the advanced cases, when there is a lot of fibrosis, when there is a lot of uh, cirrhosis that has taken place, then we have to go for the liver transplant. So uh, this was all about the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I must uh, revise this in a very quick way. Uh, Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is seen in the affluent classes and uh, most common causes are hepatitis and alcohol. It may be classified into three varieties. One, we have fatty liver, non-alcoholic uh, steatohepatitis, and the third one is the cirrhosis. So in the changes, we get fatty liver first, non-alcoholic uh, steatohepatitis, and the cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, it is also non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is also considered as a, a metabolic syndrome of hypertriglyceridemia in which the triglyceride level is raised in the blood. Hypertension can be seen, diabetes mellitus and with uh, increased BMI greater than 25. So this um, hypertension we have to treat, this hypertriglyceridemia we have to treat and this diabetes mellitus we have to treat other than the reduction of the body mass index. Uh, in the clinical features, most of the patients are asymptomatic. Uh, there will be abnormal liver function test with the slight elevation of the uh, AST, ALT, and uh, GGT. There will be occasional presence of pericell bleeding and hepatocellular carcinoma and uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It is diagnosed by mild to moderately elevated serum transgenesis with no alcohol abuse history. In the investigation, we have to go for the liver function test in which we will find AST, ALT, and ALP elevated. Uh, the ultrasound can be done. It is the gold standard method. And in case of uh, advanced disease, in order to find out the fibrosis, we can go for the liver biopsy. Now, management of alcoholic, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is done by reducing the BMI and also treating the insulin resistance. We have to re also reduce the uh, hypertriglyceridemia and we have to treat the uh, diabetes mellitus and also hypertension. Then uh, we have to, uh, we can give metformin and have the, uh, thiazolinidones and in the advanced cases, liver transplant can be done. So this is all about the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss about the hepatocellular carcinoma. So this was all for today. Uh, I hope you must have understood this session properly. Uh, this session is powered by Digital Version 2.0, Jyoti Vidya Peet Women's University. And uh, I hope you must have understood this session properly. If you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I'll try to resolve it. So this was all for today. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good day.